All right, so here I am right next to this little street here and we're gonna be taking a long exposure light trail shot here. Of course, I can't do it on the usual photo mode. Photo mode. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna shift over to the pro mode. So I do that this. Of course, I am on my selfie stick tripod, which is just kept on a railing. I like this uh, composition. Uh, one reason why I'm not really shooting in the blue hour, I usually take my night source during the blue hour, like I told you before. Uh, I'm gonna explain you, it it's a slightly complex reason why I'm not, uh, why I'm slightly later here than the blue hour. I'll, uh, it'll be tough to explain it right now with all, this thi all these things going on. Now we take the shot first. Once we're inside our laptop, I will explain you why I wasn't here during the blue hour and just slightly uh, after it, okay? But right now, how to take this shot? I can leave my focus on auto, okay? Uh, because right now I have enough light and I can focus on something like this, okay? If you're finding, one tip I can give you, if you're finding it tough to focus on the pro mode, what, because the light suddenly gets cut down, okay? So you can shift back to your photo mode and focus here, okay? And then move on to the pro mode, or you can focus here also, okay? You can even use manual focus if you have uh, more time. You can see my shutter speed is set to 10 seconds. It's gonna capture a lot of light trails. And finally, my ISO is set to the lowest value possible because I really, really wanna cut down a lot of light here. And again, there's a very important reason for all this that I'm saying. I'm gonna to explain to you after I've taken the shot. Now, one thing that I, one mistake I made was I actually uh, forgot to carry the remote which comes with the selfie stick tripod. Usually it's attached, but some for some reason, I left it in my room. So I've just, um, again, this time just gonna set the timer to 10 seconds so that there's absolutely no shake when I'm taking the shot. So my focus is set, shutter speed is gonna be the most important thing uh, here, which is 10 seconds, ISO 50, to cut down as much light as possible so that we don't overexpose the shot. Let's take this, so I'm gonna press the shutter button and it's gonna start the process. So after 10 seconds, it's gonna start the shot, which is gonna be off also 10 seconds. So that there's absolutely no shake right now as I'm taking this shot. So let's wait for these 10 seconds. I'm really hoping that a lot of cars don't go here, okay? We're gonna learn the reason for that later on. Let's just see the shot. This doesn't look too bad, okay? So we're gonna take one more shot. And I'll just fast forward the process to the shot here. All right, this time let's check the shot. Yeah, I think this also looks more dramatic than the last one. Now, I also want to take one more shot at slightly at a lesser shutter speed. You should, with these light rail shots, don't uh, be afraid to experiment a bit, okay? So let's say we can take one shot at four seconds, just to see what kind of effect it will produce. All right, so. This is the shot at four seconds. I think this looks much better exposed to be frank than the 10 seconds. We were slightly getting an overexposed shot at 10 seconds. Finally, I'm just gonna take one more shot at eight seconds, okay? Right, so this is the shot at eight seconds. Looks pretty similar to the 10 second one. Now we've got a couple of shots here. Uh, we're gonna analyze these by taking them into the laptop. I'll see you then. All right, so I wanna show you all the shots that I took so that you will be able to understand why the phone is not the best option uh, to get these shots. And then I'm also gonna be talking about that blue R point, uh, which I mentioned before, right? Why wasn't I shooting during the blue R? And this point will make you understand this. But first of all, let's look at the shot. So this was the 10 second shot and, okay, right now I'm not giving any analysis. Let's look at the shots first. 10 seconds, this was another one, I think at 10 seconds. Then this was another one at 10 seconds. Then we took a four second shot. I think this was this, this one, right? With the, it came out to be slightly darker. And then we took an eight second one, okay? Now I did go through all these shots and I found this one to be the best because, uh, you know, we had this nice, the rear light trail uh, of the cars 
you know, on top this red line, it was looking good. We are going to be significantly editing this shot later on in Snapseed. Okay, I'm going to show you that later on. But overall, this was very sharp. You can see that's the advantage of shooting this at ISO 50. That means we're not getting any sort of noise. You can even see here on this bottle, which was here, which is really, really sharp throughout. Even if I go all the way behind this into this building, literally have no noise even though if you actually think of it okay i didn't mention this if you actually think of it remember this was shot during the pro using the pro mode where we do not get the 4x3 64 megapixels we are not working with the highest megapixel capacity we're working only with 12 megapixels like i mentioned before that 4x3 without 64 is actually 12 megapixels on my camera okay but here because we've shot this at iso 50 even 12 megapixels is fine because we simply do not have any noise here. So if I want to take a big print out of the shot, I can. So these are some of the good things. Okay, that's sharp. It's free of any noise because the pro mode really helped us. Like if I was just shooting this using the automatic mode, I simply wouldn't be able to take a noise free shot like this. Okay, it's so all down to a slower shutter speed and lower noise. Now, what is the bad thing? Okay, this is where all the points and the smartphone becomes slightly bad as compared to DSLRs, which is the light trails themselves. Now remember, the sensor of a smartphone is very small as compared to your professional cameras like DSLRs, okay? What happens with that is it's simply not able to capture when it encounters something very bright like this. Like all these cars are moving together, right? So it is gonna form this cluster of highlights which basically now if I zoom in here, okay, it's simply not gonna have any details here. We call the correct term for this is highlight clipping. So highlight clipping means that you've basically clipped your highlights or exceeded the white part so much that you basically made that photo white. There's no detail here, okay? In fact, on DSLRs, you have this option where you can enable highlight clipping and this will just start blinking red in red, wherever it notices that you don't have any detail. Similarly, we have shadow clipping, which is in the darker areas where you lose so much detail uh, that you can completely get back. So that's not the problem here. The problem mainly here is with the highlights because we're dealing with light trails, okay, and a lot of them. This is the reason why I avoided shooting during the proper blue hour. We can see a bit of the blue hue because this was taken at around 8.15 in the evening. But one hour before this, the sky would have been better. But the thing is this, that's also during the rush hours, okay? So if I was shooting during the blue hour, there would have been way more amount of cars on this road. And that would have just exceeded, like really, really resulted in a lot of highlight clipping and would have just made for a very poor shot, okay? So when you're doing this with your phones, always remember one thing. You have to do it in an area which is slightly dark and where the number of cars are slightly less if you want to get a good result with your phone. With your DSLRs, it's still fine because it just captures, uh, the sensor is able to capture a lot of highlights properly without resulting in this. To be frank, even there, and I remember mentioning in my DSLR course, this is still a problem. So for phones, it's definitely a lot of problem. But we still got a decent amount of hue. Uh, I'm going to be doing some significant edits to this and I'll show you how to do that uh, in Snapseed. We're really, really going to try our best to get, really, really make this shot uh, into a proper shot. I could have used this one also. Okay, here the clipping was less, but even here, this is the four second shot. If I zoom in, you can see we've lost detail. This is one problem with uh, these phone shots. If you can find an area where cars are going, but less amount of cars are going, you stand a much better chance of getting a, a better shot, okay? But anyway, we will be seeing and revisiting the shot during the editing section. We'll make it much better here, but at least I hope that you got uh, a hang of all the fundamentals about shooting light rails. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.